Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. This is a gift from Eric Lenore. Sure it is. It's right here. Eric Lenore, you magnificent. Blaster. I'm excited about this. Nika. Yeah, because this is Nika, right? So the, you know, the overlap of people who own things now is that the Nika people also own Ben Nevis in Scotland. Okay. The Scottish distillery. Okay. Right? And they've run into a problem where, you know, they're starting to run out of Japanese whiskey because the demand was so high and blah, blah, blah. Yes. So instead of just like faking it, they created a release that's a blend of Miyagikyo, Yoichi, and Ben Nevis. Oh, interesting. So, and, I mean, it is at least those three, if not others. Yeah. And it's called Nika Session. Yeah. And they talk about the fact that they mixed those. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric got this from Japan. Cool. I kind of dig the bottle. I, right? Yeah, I like the really dark colored bottles. Yeah. So we'll see how the color is. And my suspicion proves correct. Very light. Yes. Well, no co no coloring. That's good. No coloring. And also, right. maybe one of the motivating factors in having a very dark bottle. Because mm -hmm. you don't have to mess with coloring whenever people yeah. can't see the color. Yeah, that's why I think the art bag is, is often in there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm excited about this because I love Miyagikyo and Yoichi. I think if I had to pick between the two, I prefer Miyagikyo. Mm -hmm. But I also like Ben Nevis. Hmm. I, it's been so long since I've had Ben Nevis, I don't remember remember what it is. Well, you might be able to fix that. Oh. Actually, I don't know if I have Ben Nevis. Okay. I may need to look around for so, it. So, apple. Are you getting apple juice? The operating word is sweet. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm getting really ripe apples. Apple, and then honey. Apple and some green grape. In yeah, there. green. Yeah, that is that. Uh, not sour, but tangy. And yeah. then there's grain mm -hmm. and kind of barley notes, honey. Yeah. yeah, the maltiness, the honey, and orange. I could see actually a slight milk chocolate note, like a creamy. So before we go any further, I think just a just a quick reality check. Hmm. I think you and I. You know, we could slave away all week. Yeah. Just knocking out the episodes. Yeah. Suffering. Suffering for our art. For the people. Yeah. Or Emma and Brianna come in and do one episode and have just as many views as a week full of ours. Yeah, yeah. In a whole week. Just saying. Just Son of a bitch. Just saying. <laughs> <sighs> uh, you know what? Should we make them do Wednesdays? <laughs> if they're down. <laughs> Wednesdays with, uh, when, 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 when they do that? I don't know. Should we ask them? What if we start them with once a month to slow roll them in and trick them into thinking it's not going to take too much time or effort? <laughs> and then once they, once they get the bug. Right. How do we prepare them for you, you do this long enough? Yeah. No matter how good of a job you do, there's going to be a moment where people will be like, you f suck. Oh and yeah. Yours yeah. is bullshit. And at that moment, he's like, oh, this isn't fun anymore. I'm going to stop. You can't. Yeah. Yeah, once no. you've established the thing, Here's how. you can't set precedent and then back up the precedent. That's never going to affect Brianna because she didn't give a shit. Yeah. But Emma will just not read the comments. Oh. But she's already not doing it. Well, then who's, who's in charge? <laughs> but it's always, nice, it's always nice comments about her. Yeah, yeah, no. I told her that. Yeah. And she's like, okay, maybe I'll look at them. <laughs> <laughs> now quickly put in the bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody was really nice. Yeah. In the comp no one was really out of line. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah they, they did a good job. Yeah. Uh, and thank you guys for being so Dude, positive. 1,500 comments. We normally get like 120, yeah. 170. Yeah. <sighs> you know what I think people, we've been with people too long. We're, you know, just want to call they it? They take us for granted. Let's just call it. Yeah. All right. So you're giggling. Now you ruined it. They know you're not serious. I can't help it. Say, I'm serious. All right. Fuck out. Fine. I wanted to drink Nika on camera. I still kind of like this. Do you get like a little bit of, think, Odie yeah. honey? Yes. No, that's what I think that grain note. Okay. Grain forward. Specifically oats. Yeah, not quite granola. Yeah. Almost like an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. You ever had oatmeal chocolate chip? Sure. Yeah. And did they have a proof on here anywhere? Yeah, it's in there, but it's going to be hard to read. It's usually in the small print. This is a lot of... Right 
in here somewhere you'll see a number. 43. 43%. Mm -hmm. Okay. This tastes way more like Japanese whiskey than it does like Ben Nevis, actually. And uh, quite frankly, not wildly off base from the nose. Uh, Everything that we're talking about on the nose, yeah, it sets you up accurately for what you're going to taste in the glass. Benriac, Benriac, Benriac. I then, may not have Ben Nevis. I think that it's a honey apple. Yeah, it's a honey apple finish. It's just a nice, sweet, long, drawn out, fruity finish. Hey, you're tall. Can you look at the um, Can you look at the independent bottlings and see if you see a Ben Nevis? Ooh, uh, I'm trying to. Son of a bitch. I can't. Ball. Oh, there's Bal Burp Sirp. That's hard to find. No, I don't see it. Okay, it's fine. I can't find me a Geekyo. I thought we had one. Do you know you know who would have found it? Who? Oh, I found it. Oh. Emma? <laughs> yeah. Because we have the luxury of doing this, and we are going to do this. I've got two of the malts that are supposedly in there. Yoichi me Geekyo. Yeah. Okay. So and we're going to do one each. The, uh, going back after the first sip, mm -hmm. you start to find more pear on the nose. Yeah, ah. like a grainy pear. I kind of like these like tinted bottles too. Yeah, just so you get some color in there. Mm. Okay, so that's the order. Keep track. Mm -hmm. You go, Miyagikyo. Oh, this is way. See, the Yoichi is the more earthy, dark vanilla tone. Mm -hmm. Miyagikyo is closer to what we're drinking. But there's more vanillas in that Miyagikyo. There's a real strong fruit presence the, in session, the session. Yeah, the session is more richly fruity. I think that's got to be the Scottish malt bringing all the fruit bringing to the, the fruit. table. Yeah. This is... Yeah. yeah. Way more musty, earthy. Yeah, it's also, it's lost a step in, term of, in terms of its presence, its mm. density. It's, uh, it's pretty soft on the nose. It's not like jumping out of the glass. Yoichi is a smoky caramel. Smoky salted caramel. Wow. It's good, isn't it? The taste, though. Yeah. Wow. So good. The nose, the nose is kind of like, meh, but the taste really shows up. The yoichi is a salted, smoky caramel. So I'm getting a very sweet, malty, mm -hmm. honey. It smells more earthy than what I presented on the yes, taste. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The the yoichi for me, this is a little bit drier mm -hmm. compared to the Miyagi. Yeah, I like the Miyagi. Me too. That's what I always go for. Yeah. But this is fruitier. Yeah. This is to these what the Balconus lineage is to the classic Balconus. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. And it just happens that in terms of it getting sweeter and fruitier, mm -hmm. the least, the mid, and this is the most sweet and fruity. Yeah. That session's really good. I hope they distribute yeah. that. That is good. That's super nice, man. Yeah. Super nice. That's a great blend. Even at 43%, mm -hmm. you get a lot of nice flavor. What was the percentage on these? 45 on mm -hmm. the uh, Mikikyo. And also 45. Yeah, yeah. So not crazy high proofs, but a lot of flavor jumping out of the You glass. know what's kind of cool historically about this? Mm. Is, you know, the founder, Masataka, Jeez. trained in Scotland and then came back to Japan to make malt. Yeah. So this is like a reunion of sorts. Oh, yeah. Blending together the two oh, origins yeah, yeah, of yeah, Japanese yeah, whiskey. Yeah. Just a little hug, a little pat on the ass. <laughs> it's like a bad thing. I just think that Perukian peel. Slap ass. Slap ass. Slap ass. No slap ass. Slap ass. I just slap ass. I just gotta slap ass. Nathan D. Essary. Uh, okay, I have an idea for a tribe episode, so I wanted to see what y'all think. What the cheapest whiskey you can put in a cocktail before you noticed right? is a cheap whiskey. I kind of love this idea. Yeah. It would, it would have to be a good setup. Yeah, so the proofs all need to be the same, regardless of quality. So, well, yeah, I mean, you can have one cask strength at the top end, right? And then also the logistics of if you're making stuff, if you made all the cocktails at the same time, they're gonna water down, water down, and then it's gonna be like reasonably the same amount of freshness of the cocktails. And then you choose a cocktail right. that doesn't have so much; it's burying everything. It's potentially gonna be able to give you a read on what whiskey is in there. You know what I think we do? Mm -hmm. Maybe if we did an old fashioned. But instead of leaving the ice in, you stir it to chill it and then remove the ice. And you do that for all of them. Stir it to chill it, remove the ice. 
stir it to chill it, remove the ice. And so you have, it, it got chilled, added just enough water to chill it, stopped. I don't know. I think part of an old fashioned though. It's the rock. Yeah, it's yeah, in there. But I'm just saying for A B comparison. Maybe. We'll think about it. Like I, I like the idea. Right? Yeah. Uh, JD Allen, so here's a question I've had in my mind for a while now. In the world of scotch, mm -hmm. single malt is generally considered superior to blends because blends tend to contain a higher content uh, of grain whiskey, usually mostly corn distilled in column stills, correct? Right. right. So if blended yeah, I mean, scotch that's a huge generalization, right. but we'll accept the premise. So if blended scotch is considered inferior because of the presence of a high amount of corn in the whiskey, is bourbon also considered inferior because of the same reason? If so, why or why not? No, and blends are not necessarily considered inferior because of the corn. Yeah. They're, it's because of the process of what happens. Like, they're not necessarily always using corn. At one point, they were using wheat a lot. But what happens is as soon as you start talking grain whiskey in Scotland, you're talking column still. And so you're stripping out a lot of the flavor profiles and then you're using that as the filler to, for the volume and then the malts for the flavoring. And so that's why it's considered less. It's, and it's sort of, and this is a huge generalization, this doesn't involve people like Compass Box or Douglas Lang, right. but in the budget lines, it's almost like a watered down malt, watered down with grain whiskey. Now, bourbon in Scotland, uh, totally different ball game. New oak adds all the flavor, um, it's a mash bill that's focused on flavor profile, and so it's actually treated really well in Scotland, not as an inferior product. As a matter of fact, if you really want to talk to a master distiller in Scotland and really get them talking, you talk about bourbon to most, that's what I've done, to third or four of them, that, they talk about scotch all day long. But you start talking about bourbon, right. they are all like, what are we talking about here? What did you get? Because they're getting all the barrels, right. and they want to know process, and so yeah. Yeah, I was. Did you mention that the distilling proof that you can do in Scotland? And yeah, so you go a lot higher. I didn't. You can go a lot higher in proof in distilling in the column still in Scotland than you can in the U.S., where you have to stay below 180. Unless you want to be considered light whiskey. Yeah, or 160. I mean. Yeah. Um. Yeah, 80 percent alcohol. Uh, the favorite of the lineup. This is me, Geekio, for me. Yeah, me I went too. back to this. It's still really nice, even mm -hmm. though it's a slightly lower proof in the session. Um, there is a little bit more, compared to the me, Geekio, a little mm -hmm. bit more of um, that ethanol bite. This beep, it's really good, beep, though. Beep, compared to the me, Geekio. Compared to the me, Geekio. Geekio, me, Geekio just Dense. really checks all the boxes, super nicely balanced, has these nuanced, layered flavors. How good is that for a 45? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's punching well above its weight for that oh, proof. Yeah. Damn, y'all. Damn! Here's to fighting, stealing your drink. If you fight me and fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.